Okay, welcome back to another edition of Carl's Scale Model Showcase. Thanks for tuning in, and I appreciate all the comments and all the likes and people subscribing to my channel. I don't pump out too many models per year, and the last update I did was my Freightliner Wrecker, and today. I'm happy to say that I've finished my Revell Kenworth K100 flat top and 125th scale and this was a this was a kit that was reissued from Revell Germany back in I want to say about 2016 in and around there I know this kit's been offered in a in a variety of versions over the years and um, this latest one here had a kind of a gray box art with um, with a, a little bit of country background to it um, the last time I saw this kit it was I think it was called a VIT and it was in white with some blue stripes uh, not this particular stripe package that I built mine with, <clears throat> but um, yeah. Anyways, this one, this is my version. So um, I got my decals from Chris, or pardon me, Jerry, at uh, ModelTrucking.com, and he's been my my source for decals for for a while. He. Uh, he creates some of the best decals around and um, this particular factory paint scheme um, it's a little bit challenging to do I cut out the uh, I cut out the mask by uh, what I did was I just printed off just on regular paper a copy of the decals then I cut the decals out which are just the outlining stripes the black and the gold and um, then I cut them out and I laid down the masking tape on a uh, on one of my modeling pads there it's made out of hard plastic and I cut the tape to the uh, to the stencil basically the decal and then used that to mask and then cleaned up this cleaned up the the ridge with a little bit of sandpaper so the deck would lay kind of smooth and flat on it and um, yeah it's exactly how I saw it in my mind uh, the decals I got from model trucking they uh, they were meant for the aerodyne version of this which was also re-released I think either shortly before the flat top or shortly after in around the same time frame 2015 somewhere is in there and um, yeah so I've got a bunch of these kits I've got a couple more of these factory sealed I've got three of the aerodyne offerings that are factory sealed and I'm just you know th that's part of my collection um, this one I, I, I bought an extra one just so I could build it and uh, I, I wasn't too I didn't want to do the aerodyne I really like the flat top there's the uh, Revell Kenworth uh, W900 and I'm gonna build that up in uh, similar colors um, I use the same color blue and kind of a similar stripe package and um, this one I plan on adding uh, the Wilson livestock van I'm gonna take two kits and make a, a modern day kind of 53 foot tritum and um, yeah it's gonna be like a like part of a farm truck package I'll have this one and I'll have the W900 to go along with it so um, there are some subtle differences I did this particular kit uh, and I'm also taking advice from a friend of mine and using a little tripod this time so uh, once again not to get on a rant but if uh, you guys leave comments and stuff I totally like that so I can get a, an idea of 
maybe where to improve things or I know I'm not the best uh, video maker but um, what I'm trying to showcase here is is just my my creativity on the on the scale model end of things so and once again um, as I frequently mention um, Chris over at HPI guys model workshop there um, he's just awesome and if you uh, enjoy seeing models that are built uh, not really in a time lapse <clears throat> kind of thing but um, just he, he just goes over you know he, he does a lot of stuff on his channel which is really great so anyways another shout out to him um, so yeah subtle differences I did here is so the mud flaps I uh, these are from a tree I had that was from a Revell W900 and um, normally this kit would have the, uh, the the light bar and stuff off the Peterbilt um, 359 version or offering and it had little tiny mud flaps and chrome chrome bars on the bottom of the mud flaps um, I wanted to like I said I want to build the W900 to match this truck kind of sorta so I uh, went with a mud flap change I also if you notice the fenders here um, my fenders on the back uh, they are so that's the fender that came with the kit and what I did was I'm just gonna pick up the camera here so I went in and you see how tight they are to the frame normally they're not like that they're sticking out about you know almost 3 16 of an inch maybe just over an eighth somewhere in there but um, it just doesn't look right now you can see how how the tire and the edge of the fender line up more it's more of an up-to-date realistic thing um, I just think it, it cleans it up and makes it look a whole lot better uh, this one if you look at some other versions of this kit you'll see that this frame is normally not that long in there I uh, stretched mine um, one inch exactly because I thought it just looked better with the little stretch in there very subtle but still makes a world of difference when you look at the the actual Revell version um, which this is but I'm just saying uh, their their idea of that that frame that wheelbase I just thought this would be better if it was stretched a little bit so um, you know the exhaust package and uh, the air intake and stuff that's all that's all stock this diamond plate here that's off a uh, AMT Peterbilt 359 which I like that plate that check plate piece better than the one that came with the kit and um, yeah I just uh, you know I'm, I'm gonna use one of those on W900 as well so uh, the other thing I did one of the other things I did was um, I, I really had to I struggled a lot with this paint job which you can't really tell in the camera or in the video but um, that particular blue I had a lot of problems with I've actually lost a lot of rivet detail on the roof Let's see if we can enhance it a little bit here um, and there's a couple dust particles in my paint job and stuff it got to the point here where um, this paint was just not working for me and I'm not going to say whose brand it is or anything like that. All I can say is that up here in Canada, I don't care what anybody says, I painted with Krylon for years. And Krylon, to me, is, is just awesome. It's pretty much the best paint I've ever used. And this is, uh, this is definitely not Krylon. So anyways, um, with a lot of work, it came out okay. And I got no uh, no complaints at this point, other than like I said, it 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 did present a lot of challenges with this um, particular stripe package. So another other than the paint having some challenges, I noticed that 
And, and this is not to say anything bad about Revell at all, especially the uh, truck offerings from Revell Germany. But um, this is a pretty old mold now, like the, uh, the tooling for this kit. <clears throat> and I don't know if it was just this particular kit or this run of this, um, this offering of this tractor, but uh, the, the plastic really, it's very brittle. And it's, like I said, this kit's not that old. So this plastic is very brittle and it's it was all scrubbed down and stuff before i started working on it to get the you know the mold casting residue off and whatnot but um yeah regardless it um it presented a lot of challenges when assembling this kit so anyways um, one thing i like about it very much is that uh of course it's kenworth which is my favorite truck um not necessarily k100 but uh, any Kenworth for that matter. So um, this one though, it's kind of neat. I'm just gonna go in there with my fat finger. And um, it's got the opening doors, which I find to be super cool. I wish I could, I wish I could kind of get a, see a glimpse here. My interior, it's, um, it's red and gray. It's kind of like a burgundy and gray. And uh, to get those stripes and everything to work with the opening doors and stuff, again, that was a bit of a that was a bit of a challenge. But regardless, I'm pretty happy with the way it turned out. It's also got the uh, posable steering, and um, it's it's pretty badass in my opinion. So I quite like it. Uh, did some bare metal foiling on the tanks as well, and. Uh, around the doors I just um, I use a silver sharpie um, some of the other trim and whatnot it's not really a difficult build I think they call it a skill level three or maybe even a four but um, regardless for for an experienced modeler I don't think you guys gonna have too many problems or a person's gonna have too many problems putting it together so <clears throat> um, like I said, it does present some challenges though. So I'm gonna try and just get a shot of that. I don't know if you can really see it, but right there ahead of the step um, and right at the front of the cab really at the corner is the Kenworth logo. Those are off one of the AMT offerings. Um, this kit had it either molded in or came with some decals. Um, I like the Kenworth plate that's actually a chrome Kenworth plate I highlighted with some uh, Tamiya uh, black wash there panel line paint and um, yeah and there we go so we had a couple of small modifications like I said um, I'm gonna try and hang on here I'm gonna try and just open that cab up So here we go with the uh, with the cap tilted up now, and I stayed uh, surprisingly enough. Um, I stayed with the original power plant, which is the uh, twin turbo Cummins. It's been offered for many many years in the 359 and the K100. Um, I kit bashed this into my AMT Peterbilt 352. Um, Pacific 66 Super B hauler there. Uh, it's a pretty nice motor. I got a better um, brand of paint there for the Cummins beige or tan. I think they call it beige, so whatever. Um, it works, and I, I really like that paint, so that worked out pretty good. Um, of course, I detailed everything up with you know the the tires and some paint detail and stuff with the bags and. Um, You'll notice too that I'm going to just uh, pop the cab down in another second here, but um, that's a pretty good shot here. Let's see if I try and hold this steady. You get all the pipes in there and whatnot, all the plumbing. 
So I'm just going to put the cab back down now. I'll put a little kind of close up there. And yeah, I'm just going to tip her back down. So I just opened that door up and I'm trying to get a shot of that interior there. So like I said, I do have the, I do have the red and the uh, gray, it's some bare metal foiling on the door there. You can see the gauge package there a little bit. It comes with a decal offering. There's two little um, kind of plates in there. Um, yeah, I don't have enough lighting for that other one, but I chose to paint detail the, the actual plastic pieces instead of using the decals. I'm going to actually use the decals on the, or the AMT Kenworth uh, K123 kit that I'm going to build. Um, that's going to be coming up here in 21, uh, hopefully uh, as a day cab offering. Um, the, and I'm going to use those decals because the, the engraving on that dashboard is not really the greatest. But um, again, I'm not out to bash anybody. I love these model kits and uh, kudos to all the manufacturers. And one of my favorites being Round 2 at this point who they're releasing everything uh, which is just to me that's wonderful because you know modeling is such a great hobby I hope more people get into it or um, modelers that haven't been doing it for a while I hope that they get back into building some kits and it's just it's a great way to pass time and show your cre creative side um, I don't rehearse any of these uh, videos or anything which another friend of mine said oh yeah you should get a script in that you know I just kind of do it on the fly and um, you know I'm not out to you know try and make any money off YouTube or um, you know get a huge fan base I mean I certainly like I said appreciate the commentary the compliments and the views that I do get um, I'm just trying to like I said as as my my title says it's the uh, the scale model showcase and that's all I'm looking to do is just showcase some of my work here um, again the doors that open that's a really nice touch I think really does a lot for the truck and uh, the only thing that is really missing at this point I'm just gonna move it so on the back there, cross member, at some point I'm going to have to get a, um, I'm going to have to scratch build a little taillight bar with a backup light and a couple of taillights uh, just to make the truck kind of look correct and legal, I guess. Um, and again, with the, with the shortening of the um, braces for the, that attach the fenders to the frame, um, to, to tuck them into the tire and clean it up a little bit so they're not sticking out half a mile in my opinion I also did the same thing with the steering axle is I uh, I, I kicked out those tires and wheels about a scale eighth of an inch maybe even three sixteenths to get them more flush with the uh, with the edge of the cab there I just I don't know I think it, it just makes the whole truck look a lot cleaner um, that particular paint job I uh, it's exactly how I saw it in my brain uh, with the frame painted the same color and whatnot um, and then you know I think this this angle right here just really let's see here that angle right there that just really does the truck some justice especially if you turn that steering wheel or those steering axle a little bit um yeah there's a good shot right there so anyways once again it's uh Ravel's Kenworth K100 flat top with a few modifications and um I appreciate you guys everybody tuning in I got some more videos coming up 
of some of the muscle cars I've been working on, more of drag car versions, I guess. Um, and I'm going to do a video on my uh, Peterbilt day cab, which was just kind of a, a throw together with some spare parts. So that'll be coming up here soon. And along with, uh, like I said, some of my drag cars. And um, there is some of my real cars, because uh, I do have real muscle cars uh, on my channel there. Um, I think I'm going to start a different channel for the, the actual real hot rod stuff. Because, you know, I want to just showcase models on this particular, um, on this particular channel, I guess. And uh, kind of separate the actual real cars out of it. So, but uh, for right now, there is some of my, um, some of my real car stuff on there as well. So, once again, thanks for, uh, thanks for tuning in. And uh, please feel free to... Uh, like, comment, or subscribe. See you next time.